Praise the Lord. Happy, healthy, going higher. Praise the Lord. Was he talking about Jesus? The all sufficient Jesus. Tonight, a new miracle in your life. Tonight, a new power penetration in your life in Jesus' name. Candidate for miracle. What's the candidate tonight? Father, well, thank you. Well, bless your name. What a great, mighty God you are. And you have sent Jesus to us, the all-sufficient Savior. The all-sufficient healer, the all-sufficient deliverer. We're asking, O oh Lord, tonight, everyone here will receive a new touch, a new miracle, a new experience, and a new evidence of your love unto them in Jesus' name. Confirm everyone, a candidate for miracle today. Thank you, Lord. It's done. For me, it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now in great expectation of what the Lord is going to do in your life today. We'll see you continuing with Jesus. And today we're talking about Jesus, the good, great, gracious, reigning shepherd. Christ, our Lord. Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What he has come to do in your life, in my life, in our life, everywhere. Here at the Alpha location and over there, anywhere you are. Jesus, the good, great, glorious, reigning shepherd. Look at John chapter 10. In verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Giveth his life. You want to understand that everything... Heaven has packaged together, abides in that life. He gave his life so that all the promises of God in the scriptures will be mine, will be yours. So that the power of the Lord revealed from the very beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. Everything is inside that life that he gave. And so that... The provision, the proclamation, and the prophetic sayings of God in the Bible. Everything contained in that life. Everything wrapped up in that life. It says, I am not I was, not I will be. I am at the present day for everyone. I am the good shepherd. He'll never do any bad thing in our lives. I want to hear your amen. amen. And when he says good, it means good. Good all the time. Good to every person. Good transparently. You know, when we see people are good, that means maybe more often than not. Good but sometimes they are bad. In the case of Christ, Jesus is good all the time. When we say people are good, they're good to some few people. But they're bad, they're wicked to many other people. When Jesus says he's good, he's good to everyone uniformly. When people say they're good, they look at your face. And they look at your column. And they look at your background. Then if that satisfies them, then they might be good. But the rest of the people, they are bad to. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, 
It doesn't mind the color of your skin. It doesn't, my, my, it doesn't look at the style of your ear do. It doesn't look at your dress. It doesn't look at anything. It's just good. To you, it's just good. And maybe you are coming for the first time. You have not been here. All these days you have been here. And the Lord will not penalize you. He says you are here. And to you tonight, he will be the good shepherd in Jesus' name. I am the good shepherd. In that word good, there's greatness there. There's the great shepherd. There's glory there. The glorious shepherd, there is the reigning power, authority there, the good reigning authority, the shepherd. And tonight, everything you need, package in the goodness of Christ, he will give to you. He will give to me. He will give to me, make it personal. Look at verse 14. It says that again, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Tonight, Jesus, the good, great, glorious, reigning shepherd. We're looking at four things today. Number one, we're looking at the good shepherd who gave his life, his life as determined. As it has been determined by the Heavenly Father that He will come to this world. And that was determined before the beginning of the world. The good shepherd who gave his life as determined. Number two, the great sympathizer who gives life to the dead. The great sympathizer who gives life to the dead. He'll raise you up. I said, if you raise, he'll raise you up. If you are died to life, what I mean is voluntarily by yourself. Just lie down. I've gone through enough. There's nothing else to do. And I'm lying down there, and it's like life has come to an end. Activity has come to an end. Vision has come to an end and progress has come to an end today a new beginning in your life it will wake you up it will bring new life into you exciting life it will give a kind of liberated life it will liberate you tonight in Jesus name he is a great sympathizer who gives life to the dead. Number three, the glorious sovereign. That means the one that has authority to rule and reign. The glorious sovereign lifted to glory through his death. Through his death. is lifted up to glory. Number four, the God sent servants. Serving all his disciples. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the good shepherd who gave his life as determined. And look at um, uh, the word of God. He tells us, we're reading that again in John chapter 10. Uh, let me go back to verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, the thief cometh. Not uh, but for to, a comet, not but for to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am calm. I am calm. The thief, a Satan, that's the devil, that's that old serpent. He came to the garden, and before he left, everything became drear. And he's come to Sodom and Gomorrah. Before you know what, Satan, is, uh, Satan came there and they are under fire. They are destroyed. And he came to Canaan. Before the children of Israel got there, before he got there, it was so bad. The Lord had to pack them off and drive them away. He came to Nineveh. The thief cometh, but for to steal. 
When Satan comes to you, he's not coming as a friend. He's coming as a thief. He steals your brain by giving you something to drink. He steals your power by giving you, making you a slave. A slave to sin. A slave to substance. A slave to everything that captures man and kills the man. The thief comes. And when he comes anywhere, there's devastation, there's destruction. But Jesus said, now I come to reverse everything the devil has done in your life. I thought you'll give me, will carry, amen. He said, I am come that they might have life. Tell the person by your side, today you have life. Life that is worth living. Life recognized in heaven. Life that God gives you, you'll be happy you were born into this world because the greatest thing that could happen will happen to you through Christ. I have life. And then he said, that's not the end. You see, there are people, when they come to the Lord, and the Lord gives them life, initial life, eternal life, and he gives them a happy life, they're healed. They de they're delivered. And they say, I have life. Then they run away. They don't come the next time. Come back. Abundant life is your portion. It says that they might have it more abundantly. It's after that that he said, I'm going to give life to everyone who comes. I'm going to give abundant life to the one that comes again. After that, in verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd giveth. Not only that he gave, he's giving now. And he'll continue to give to everyone who comes. You're coming today, he'll give you life. Sorrow will go away. Guilt will go away. Depression. What's depression? You know when you have something and you press it down. And it makes a mark there. And the thing doesn't come up. It's depressed. There are people, the souls are depressed. The spirits are depressed. The lives depressed. Everything depressed in their life. Depression will go tonight. Sometimes the depression, stress, distress, and satanic affliction. Affliction is going tonight. Because the good shepherd is here. And he says, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And you are the person he's talking about. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, I am the good shepherd. He said that before. He said, should in case there's somebody there that missed that, get it again. The repetition is for emphasis. The repetition is saying that as the dream of Pharaoh was doubled, repeated, it says there is a certainty. There's no shadow of doubt. This must happen to you tonight. The goodness of the shepherd will visit you. And I know my sheep. And I know my sheep. And I am known of mine. And look at uh, verse uh, 17. In verse 17 it says, Therefore does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. Before he died, he said, Yes, I'm going to die. I'm going to lay my life down for him, for her, for them, everywhere. And then I'm going to rise again. I have the power to lay down and to rise again. It says that I might take it again. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, no man take it from me. 
No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. He loves you so much. He said, I'll go through the agony. So you'll not go through the agony anymore. I'll go through the suffering so that you'll not go through the suffering anymore. And voluntarily I do that. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Commandment, go lay your life down for that individual there. For that individual there. For that person there. And the Lord, knowing that is laying down his life, will make you the person God wants you to be. He's done that for you. He's done that for it's done that for you. That's why your salvation is guaranteed. Nobody can prevent you from getting that salvation. My salvation is guaranteed. Heaven has heard you. Heaven will confirm that. We're coming to number two now. Number two, we're now in John chapter 11. The great sympathizer who gives life to the dead. The great sympathizer. You see, we go through many things in life. And as we go through those things in life, we need sympathizers. And you know, even when something little happens like a carpenter, and uh, you are knocking the, what, the hammer, the nail into the wood, and then you mistakenly strike it on your hand. You look around, anybody to say sorry, we want sympathizers. We need sympathizers. And if there's nobody to sympathize, then we we'll bear our problems all alone. And we we'll become lonely, and loneliness even kills. The people say, what am I living for? Nobody sympathizes with me. Nobody supports me. Nobody suckers me. Nobody helps me. I'm all alone. And then they are gone. But Jesus is your sympathizer. You see, there are sympathizers that will just say, sorry, sorry. And they say, sorry again. But they are powerless. They cannot do anything. Somebody is poor and somebody comes along, sorry. But you cannot provide what you need. Somebody is naked. And uh, you know you have people. Sorry. Sorry for your condition. And yet they cannot do anything about you. Somebody is really sick. And is dying. And there are people that shed tears. They are sorry about this. They are sympathizers. But they cannot do anything. But Jesus is the sympathizer. Who will take your problem away. When he visits you, his sympathy will produce a practical action. He'll raise you up. That person there, he'll raise you up. And when Jesus visits you, that's the end of sorry, sorry, sorry. Nobody will be sorry for you anymore. You're up and alive because the sympathizing Christ is able to do Everything you're asking. Look at this in John chapter 11, verse 3. Therefore, his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And somebody says, I wish Jesus would love me like that. He loves everyone. And actually, it's because of his love that he went to the cross of Calvary to die for you. He first loved us before we now love him. He loves you to look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, when Jesus had that, he said, Day sickness is not unto death. Amen. Are you there? That sickness will not kill you. The sickness is not unto death. You are there. This problem is not unto death. Are you there? This perplexity is not unto death. 
nothing will not kill you. Before that death comes, Jesus will get to you. And Jesus will be glorified in your life. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Eventually, 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 Lazarus died. I thought Jesus said, the sickness is not unto death. Yes, that's what he said. What did he mean? The sickness is not the final death. You didn't say amen to that one. It may appear to come and it knocked the man down. And the people thought they need to remember the words of Jesus. So they buried him. Whatever has buried you, whoever has buried you, you'll come out of that grave. You have not finished why you came to the world. A lot of good things still remains before you. And they're going to be done. So, Jesus now got there and Martha said, Lord, if you have been here in the past, my brother would not have died. It says, but I'm here now. You are saying, if this crusade that happened some months ago, I would not have gone through this and that, but the crusade is here for you now. Yeah. And everything you desire, everything you demand, tonight is your night. Yeah. And so Jesus said, where have you buried him? And I'm asking where has your neighbor buried you? Where has the tyrant buried you? Where has your enemy buried you? Take Jesus there. I said take Jesus there. All the burial, the funeral ceremony, the enemy has con conducted for you. Everything is reversed tonight. And so they got there. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. And Martha said, Jesus, how can we do that? The man had died these four days ago. Jesus said, Martha, didn't I tell you that if you can only believe, you will see the glory of God tonight you come. You are not here as a doubter. You are here as a believer. You will see the glory of God. So, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Whatever thoughts you have that are sealed evil in your life, Take away the stone. Whatever idea you have that makes you feel it's over and life is gone. I've destroyed myself. I've seen beyond the day of grace. There's nothing like that. Grace will flow into your life tonight. And so they obeyed Jesus. I've noticed, I've noticed that everything, every time will be Jesus. A miracle always happens. And as you obey Christ tonight, you surrender your life to Christ tonight. Miracle. The miracle of forgiveness, of freedom, of salvation, of a new life will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 39. Verse 39 of that John chapter 11. It says, and Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Look at your life. Look at your life. Whatever heavy stone, either you put it there, or they put it there, others put it there, to say that your end has come. Your life is finished. Your future is cancelled. Take away that stone, that thought in your mind, the unbelief in your mind, and say, I will live again. I'm looking at somebody there. You will live again. A good life. 
an excited life, a risen life. And so, Master, the sister of him that was dead says unto him, Lord, by this time, he stinketh. And he said that somebody's life is stinking. His utterance, his words, stinking. They say, they inter if you interact with him, you'll find that he's a stinking man. He's a stinking woman. But thank God today, Jesus looks away from the stinking and he says, come and live. Where is he? Come and live. Where is she there? Come and live. For he had been dead for this. Look at verse 40. In verse 40, Jesus says unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Look at verse 41. Verse 41, then they took away the stone. That's all, that's all we have to do. He says, take here away the stone. And then uh, after some considerations and talking and going here and there, they eventually did what he expected. Then uh, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. You understand? He had not even prayed. He had not even given the decree that will bring the blessing. And he said, Father, you know I'm going to pray. And even before I pray, I know that you have heard me. Do you understand that even before the final amen, now as we are talking, God has answered your prayer. I need salvation. I want salvation. Before you even raise up your hand, before you stand up, the Lord has answered your prayer. I want a new life. I want eternal life. Before you have the chance to cry out to the Lord, congratulations tonight, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter. God has answered your prayer. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Look at verse 42. In verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Thou hearest me how often? Thou hearest me how often? On Thursday. He answered us on Friday. He answered us on Saturday. He answered us. What's going to happen today? He will answer because he hears the prayer that goes through the name of Jesus always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 43, in verse 43, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, say it now. What's your name? I mean your own name. I mean the one you know, this is my name. What's that name? Put it in place of Lazarus. And say, Come forth and praise the Lord tonight. I see you coming forth. Yeah. Out of that dungeon, you are coming forth. And we're told in verse 44, and it says, And he that was dead, was, 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 death became past tense. In your life, death, past tense. Death, past tense. Disease, Pastors and all the works of the devil they become pastors in your life in Jesus' name. I am glad you came today, and all the people online on television on radio. I'm glad you are there. All those calamities will become past tense. Look at your neighbor and say, Past tense. 
I used to cry. Past days. I used to be sorrowful. Past days. I used to feel dead as if nothing alive is in me. Past days. I used to think I was going to hell. I knew. I knew the path I was treading and the things I was doing. I used to think about hell, 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 that I was going to hell. Thank God, past tense. Shout it. Believe it. And he that was dead came forth, bound, hand, and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus says unto them, Loose him. And let him go. Loosed. Loosed. All the cords that bind you. Loose him. Let him go. All the shackles and everything shameful that bound you. Loose him. Let him go. The things that ties you in that wheelchair, lose him and let him go. Amen. He'll forgive your sin. He'll totally take away every bad habit that bound you. I tried, I tried, I tried to overcome. No more trying, trust him. He'll deliver you tonight. Because there's a command coming from heaven on your behalf. Lose him. And let him go. Look at chapter 12 there. Chapter 12. We're coming to point number three. Point number three. The glorious sovereign lifted to glory through his death. Lifted up to glory through his death. And look at um, John chapter 12. We're looking at verse 32. John chapter 12 verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That lifting up that you spoke about there is being lifted up on the cross of Calvary. You see, they arrested him and Judas betrayed him and they put the cross on his back to carry his cause and they led him to Calvary and there they put down the cross like this and they stretched his sand and they put his feet on that wooden cross and then it says they nailed the hand and they nailed the other hand and they nailed the feet then they took up the cross with him nailed there and they jerked it on the ground so he was there and eventually he gave up the ghost but before he did that he said it is finished your calamity it is finished your sorrow, it is finished. All the devil tried to do in your life, it is finished. And then he went to heaven. He came before the heavenly father. He said, Father, I've done it. I've finished it. The calamity I've removed. The sin I brought salvation to them. And all the works of the devil finished, gone. And then he sat at the right hand side of the almighty God. And he says, then I will draw all men unto me before his death. Before his resurrection. Before he was lifted up. How many Africans, how many Nigerians were there to be drawn unto him? How many Americans were there to be drawn to him? How many Europeans were there to be drawn unto him? It's now, after his death in every town, after his death in every nation, he's drawing people unto himself. And tonight, he's drawing you unto himself. I watched... A goat, a tied rope on the neck, 
They're trying to draw that goat to where the goat will drink water and find grass, whatever, to eat. And as they were drawing the goat, the goat was stiffening the neck and reversing and going and saying, no, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be drawn. And so that drawing led to dragging. They now are now dragging the goat, but the goat is still refusing. You know, Christ has already suffered for you. Say amen. amen. He's provided everything. And now he's drawing you. You will not be a goat. I will not be a goat. And the goat that while the Lord is drawing him or drawing her, is stiffening the neck and drawing back and saying, no, he doesn't want eternal life. No, he doesn't want salvation. No, he doesn't want the goodness of God. The Lord draws you tonight. You will say yes to this loving Christ drawing you tonight in Jesus' name. And it will draw you to the very source of salvation. It will draw you to your healing. It will draw you to your deliverance. It will draw you to all the sufficiency that he has proclaimed and provided for us on the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that person who came from, I don't want to mention, it's you know, a disgracing place. And then you are in the valley, inside the bottom of the well. And it will draw you out and put you on the top of the mountain. He comes, he comes, he comes. He draws you. He calls you. It says, where I am, I want you to be there. A place there's no sickness. A place there's no sorrow. A place there's no suffering. Right over there in heaven is drawing you and it wants you to be there. You will be there. I will be there. And he'll be the glorious sovereign, the glorious king that will reign in your life forever and ever in Jesus' name. We're coming to number four here. Number four, we're looking at the God sent servant serving his disciples. The God sent servant serving his disciples. What happened is John chapter 13. John chapter 13, something spectacular happened. Something unheard of happened. This Jesus, the Lamb of God, this Jesus, the supplier of all our needs, this Jesus, the uplifted Christ, this Jesus, the savior of the whole world. Did Jesus, the one that cures the incurable. This Jesus that provides food for everyone hungry. This Jesus that brings the fountain of living waters. This Jesus, the very one that cancels condemnation and he brings life. This Jesus the light of the world. This Jesus, the shepherd, the good shepherd. This Jesus that brings life to the dead. This Jesus, the reigning king and the reigning sovereign. All of a sudden, he took a bowl. And the disciples were watching him. They poured water there. And as he poured the water there, he began to wash the dirty feet of the disciples. They couldn't understand. They couldn't imagine how the king of glory, the king of all power, will take water and begin to wash their feet. And Peter said, my Lord, what are you doing? You never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I do not wash you, if you don't give me the chance to serve you, it comes to serve you. 
I said it comes to serve you. It's unthinkable. It's unthinkable that the king of glory, the God of glory, would look at you. You come from the village. You come from the town. You come from a backward situation. And the king of glory will bend down and wash every dirty sin out of your life. He says, I don't even need your help. That I will turn over a new leaf. He said, I don't need that. You say, I will do better. He said, okay, you'll do better, but I don't need that now. All I want to do now is to serve you. The Lord will serve you. He'll wash your dirty life. He'll wash your dirty personality. And everything defiling that you have done, he'll wash everything away. And when he had finished, he laid down the towel with which he dried up the water in their feet and said, Ye call me Master and Lord. And ye say, Well, for so I am. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, For I am. I've given you an example that ye should do as I have done unto you. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, if ye know these things, happy are you if ye do them. The Lord is bringing you to a life of happiness, a life of joy. And the actions of your life after you come to him and he washes you, and he cleanses you, and he gives you an example that we should follow his steps. What you do then will bring joy to you on earth. Will bring unspeakable joy to you in heaven. And as you come to Christ, and he comes to you, and he washes you, and he cleanses you, cleanses your life. Your life today is starting on a new step. Joyful life. Happy life. Excited life. Profitable life. Profitable life. I thank God you are here tonight. It's about to wash you. About to cleanse you. And about to do everything you couldn't do for yourself. It's not only washing your feet. You'll wash your heart. You'll wash your soul. If you wash your spirit. And every bad thing you have done that made your life dirty in the past. This moment, Christ is washing everything away. For me. For me. For me. And they'll never be remembered anymore in Jesus' name. And when eventually we get over there, maybe your friend, but who has not been washed by the Lord, he says, I'm just like you, you're just like me, they don't understand. And then we get over there and they open the books and they look at what they have done. Every dirty thing they ever said, every dirty thing they ever did, everything is there. They say, look at what your life was. And then the other, that fellow goes to the other side. And he's, uh, you know, peeping back and looking back because, you know, he knew you. And then you got there and you opened the books and the book of life. And they won't find a trace of any bad thing you ever did. And your friend on earth is wondering, uh -uh, what happened? I knew him now. When I told a lie, he told a bigger lie. And when I stole, he stole a bigger thing. I will see it. My own, all that I did is there. They can read that. And for him, they cannot find any bad thing he had done. Because for him, I'm talking about you. I said, I'm talking about you. The Lord has washed everything away. It can happen tonight. It will happen tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. He wants to wash you now. 
He wants to cleanse you now. Every bad thing you ever did, he wants it to be forgotten. And when you get to heaven, your record will be clean. My record will be clean. And you want him to do that right now. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and say, yes, Lord, I want you to be my good shepherd. You gave your life and I come under the banner of what you have done to become my savior. You say you raised me from the dead life I've been living. Lord, I come anywhere you are here online, everywhere, raise up your hand, that new life is now coming. And it will reign over your life. And it will lead you, direct you, control you to a better life. And now everything of the past that give you heartache, headache, it will wash everything away. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. Praise the Lord for that hand. Wonderful for that hand. Take the next step now and stand up on your feet cheerfully, joyfully, gladly because it wants to wash all your dirty life of the past. It wants to wash everything away right now. Stand right there on your feet and it's yours tonight. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I submit myself unto you. I surrender myself unto you. And Lord, I plead that all my past dirty life be washed away right now. You'll not say no. Father, I thank you because you have heard me and because you hear me always. is hearing you now because you are praying through Jesus Christ. Coming into the kingdom, it cleanses us from all sin, washes us from all sin. Round out the prayer now. The Lord has answered your prayer. I said, The Lord has answered your prayer. Keep that hand up and keep on standing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we rely on your promise that whosoever comes to Christ, you will in no wise cast out. These have come. And I pray, Lord, become their savior. Become their shepherd. Become the one that washes and cleanses them from all the defiling life of the past. Make them new creatures in Christ right now. Let the joy of salvation, the certainty of salvation, the evidence of salvation come into every heart right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. You are saved. I am saved. Confirmation in your life right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And our officiating minister will take over now. I will come back and pray for you. Your miracle is guaranteed tonight in Jesus' name. Congratulations. This is the best decision you have taken. Don't sit down until our counselors have attended to you. There's a slip that will be given to you. Please fill it. If you cannot write, the counselors will help you. And all our counselors, please, I want us to move to the back, to the roadside. People are gathered all over. Move into the rooms. Move by my left to the roadside. Move all over the camp. Let's quickly write down the names of the people. Let's just go straight. 
to the point, but write it properly, write their phone numbers, get the essential parts so that we can be able to finish within a short time because we know our father-in-law is coming back to pray for us. Please, I want us to spread ourselves all over. I'm not seeing movement. I believe all our choir members have joined. Please, all our workers within the congregation, whatever you're doing, please let's join in the counseling. The people are so many. The converts are so many. Since the past days, we have been having a lot of converts, and it's not easy to complete. So today, let's try our best. And please, as we are writing down the next the section, that section that finished their own part, you raise the flag or give us a sign, give me a sign, so that we'll be able to know you are true. I cannot see counselors by my right-hand side. Please, those of us that gave our lives, we took decision. If you have sat down, kindly stand up so that the counselors can locate you. Please, those that have said we should join them, let's do so. This is a very, this is part of the most important part of the program. People getting saved to get to the kingdom is very, very important. Let's take it with all fastness, with all our strength, wisdom, skill. Those who can write, please. Allow them to write. Since we have virus, give it to them to write. And remember to give the package, the packages for the new decision, new converts. Remember, our Father in the Lord is coming back to pray for us. Those of us that are seated, let's be praying and waiting and expecting our miracles. While we are waiting, please, we listen to these announcements. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this very evening, please visit the link that has been given, gck.hq.org. And fill the form so we can assist you, Father, in your new work with Christ. Our counselors, please, let's do our best, be fast, so that we can meet up and get, if we cannot capture all the canvas, let's get as much as we can.
Please, I take those announcements again. If you are listening or watching online, and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, please visit the link gckhq.org slash connect and fill the form so, so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name to this phone number which I'm going to read to you now to help us so that we can be able to locate you. Write this WhatsApp number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I take it again plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Please, if you have finished in your own section, by the road side, those of us holding the flag, if you can come nearer so that I can see you, so you can wave it, so I can know you are true. And those in front, do the same. Please, let's Make sure we also go to the back, very far back. Many people are there. And I still plead with those of us that raise our hand up as you are expecting your next miracle, you have received the first one, just stand up so that the counselors could see you, so that they can get the information and also give you the convenience package. Please, let's remember those in the hostels, in the rooms, by my right hand side. Let's write clearly, especially the phone numbers. Remember, Sometimes we need to count the phone numbers to ensure that the digits, the number of digits to ensure they are 11. Or if you are using plus, there will be 13 digits. Those in front of me, are you true? Amen. Those by my right hand side, are you true? I cannot see any. What of those by my left hand side? Please, let's hurry up. Let's still write the names as much as we can because of the short time. I still plead, if you have sat down, after raising your hand, kindly rise up, stand up. Don't be tired so that the counselors can attend to you before you sit down. While we are seated, the rest of us and those that your names have been taken, and you have been given your package, let's be praying, expecting, believing God for another glow of miracles, wonders. The Lord is a merciful God. He is visiting us again today. Be praying and expecting your own miracle. Those by my right, are you through now? By my right. Okay, let's continue, please. Let's do our best. By the left, those at my left. Those by my left. Any, have you finished? Please, let's continue. Let's start up. 
Those of us here who has completed your own, please join left and right. Let's see that we quickly help the other people so that we can capture as much as possible because I know there are so many converts. So please, let's move to the other parts that have not completed their own. Thank you. Let's move quickly. Are you the people by the, the flag on now? Is it the, my right-hand side? If it is so, just do like this so that I will know. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. By my left. Thank you very much. Those at the far back, please do your best. As we are doing that, let's have our heart neat, ready, full of expectation, because tonight is another night of jubilation to the glory of the Lord. Those by the right, completed, front, completed, left. Please, let's move to the back and have as much as we can write. Before the man of God comes back, let's still do what we can do. Thank God that we are able to complete front, left, right, those in the hostels, please, if you are hearing me, make sure you complete all writing the names of all the canvas. And if your sleep get finished, please quickly get more. All right. I know we have captured much now. Let's get ready for a miracle. Let's be ready to receive as his servant comes off, our Father in the Lord, to release the all sufficient power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Candidate for miracle, I said, praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord has answered us even before we pray. Amen. And the Lord has given the command from heaven, loose him and let him go. From that wheelchair, you are loosed. Amen. From the bandage, that binds your eyes and you could not see that bandage is removed. Yeah. And whatever is holding you down, the Lord has given the decree from heaven. Lose him. Lose her. Let him go. Let her go. You are going back home with healing. With miracles. What's your deliverance? It is done. It says, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And because of the people here, I say what I say. Because you always hear me. You always hear us when we pray in the name of Jesus. Ready? Your miracle is coming your way. Raise up that hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, we thank you because you have heard the prayer. We're praying in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we rejoice in the fact that when you are lifted up, 
you'll draw all men unto you. You draw them out of their sin, out of their sickness, out of satanic affliction. Now it is done in Jesus' name. Set everyone free. Lose them. Lose them. Lose them. And let them rise up. Out of your wheelchair, you rise up. Out of bondage, you rise up. Out of blindness, you rise up. Out of that sick bed, you rise up. I send forth the healing power of Christ unto you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Madness, vanish away. Blindness, vanish away. Dumbness, vanish away. Deafness, vanish away. Cancer, vanish away. Ulcer, vanish away. Pain anyway, your body vanish away. Asthma vanish away. All incurable diseases vanish away. Elephantiasis, that abnormal swelling there vanish away. Hearing strange voices that will turn you mad vanish away. Everyone now, you are loosed. To the right, to the left, to the far back, middle and front, you are loosed. You are listening over the television, you are listening over the radio, you are loosed and set free. And those on hospital beds who are connected right now, healing instantaneously, for you in Jesus' name. Right now, miracle for everyone. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. It is done. It is done. You will not remain in your bondage. You are loose in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, Lord, because there's confirmation, there's demonstration, there's manifestation everywhere right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. It's done. It's done. It's done. You come out as you see the miracle that has happened over there in your body. 